What is the scoop to Indian ringneck babies? Hey guys, today's video is going to be about what I would want to know, what I do know, about Indian ringnecks. Oh God, they're so cute. And um, what I would want to know if I was getting a baby Indian ringneck. So, before we get started, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrotless Bond. If you're new to my channel, I have over 20 species of parrots. I love parrots. My vet, because I take such good care of my birds, well, they know me. Like when I call, the receptionist recognizes my phone number and she's like, hi, Kaylin. Um, I just, I love my birds. I love taking really good care of them. Look at this. This is the youngest of the clutch. There were four in the clutch. And this baby, actually, you could see that the eyes, can you see that? The eyes are actually, trying to get the camera to focus, red. And so <clears throat> you can see that some of the feathers are coming out white. It's gonna be a white baby. We've got two white babies. Come here, sweetie. One that looks like it's gonna be like a light blue or like a light steel gray. And now Indian ring neck babies are not sexually dimorphic, which means that, oh, what's on your eye? What's on your, um, which means that in order to be able to tell the difference between the genders, we would have to DNA them until they're about, oh, a year or a year and a half or so old, at which point, of course, the males will get, it looks like a necklace, a ring around their neck. Look at those beautiful feathers coming out, the pretty colors on this little dinosaur. Uh, the Indian ringnecks, you know, they're phenomenal. They just seem to be watching, like they're more astutely <clears throat> aware than some of our other babies. There you go, I gotcha. And these are all the same clutch. Uh, the fourth baby is also white, so I won't show you that one, but mom, dad is this color and mom was like, is like the previous color and they also made white. So here's what I would want to know if I was in the market and looking at Indian ring nuts, uh, babies. Number one, <laughs> how cute. He's like, where am I? What's going on? Hi. Um, this is a matriarchal species and the females tend to be not quite as nice and sweet and cuddly, that kind of thing. Um, one of my experts just said to me that he thinks the females should basically just be in aviaries and I completely understand why and I completely agree. My female, if she's out, one problem I have is I have to really keep my eye on her because she kind of goes and if there's a bird she doesn't like, a small bird, she will start to sort of be aggressive with it. So it's kind of a problem. Uh, our male is almost like a different species. He is not super sweet and cuddly the way my Quaker is. <laughs> We're trying to get our two Quakers used to each other. And so Pretzel just flew over right there. And Blue is kind of going, I don't know. And now I don't know if you can hear that. Um, I can see my umbrella cockatoo running around the top of the cage like something's on fire, which nothing is. Okay, so, oh, you know what? You're a little stuck, aren't you? Betsy, Betsy, there you go. There you go. Um, see if you can see sort of the, he's just really keenly aware. And of course, he doesn't exactly like being held right now. They like to have something under them, you know, making them feel more solid. And so my hand isn't quite cutting it. Now, in comparison, this is a crimson bellied conure. And do you see how the crimson, oh, it's so cute. It's looking around and everything, but not quite with that same awareness. And look at this, I wanna see if you guys could see the little red. Oh, it's right, uh, oh, I can, I'm starting to be able to see it on the camera. Do you see the little spot of red? There we go, right by my thumb. 
um, because of course crimsons have red under their wings and getting a little bit of red hi baby hi baby so what I would want to know if I was looking at getting an Indian ring neck, especially if I was like looking at an Indian ring neck versus some other species, is like I said, um, you know, if you are someone who is like at work or at school most of the day, uh, then an Indian ring neck, a female, might be the right bird for you because they're pretty independent. I wanted to show you my definition of cuddly. Come here, Blue. Okay, this is my definition of cuddly. Hi, Blue. Look at him, he's, he's making little sounds. Oh, you get the pet. Oh, what a sweet boy. Hi, hi. You wanna hang out on my shoulder? Now, an Indian ring neck, there are always exceptions, but an Indian ring neck is not gonna be like that. Indian ringnecks are more independent and the females, generally speaking, are even more independent than the males. So if you're that person who's at work all day, but you want a parrot, an Indian ringneck might be the right bird for you. However, you don't want a bird home alone all by themselves, especially if you also have like a cat or a dog. So <clears throat> if that's the case, you still want to get maybe another ringneck and maybe they're in their own cages, but they can hear and see each other so that they have some companionship. Or, you know, maybe another set of, uh, there's pretzel, another set of parrots, like maybe you have a pair of um, green cheek conyers or something like that. But then that way the ring neck doesn't feel like it's isolated. That way the ring neck starts to get a feel of a little bit more jungle. The more they just have that companionship, the more they feel comfortable and safe because that's sort of how it's really meant to be, right? Hello, Abby. How are you, love? This is Abby. And he's a plucker. Sometimes when parrots have clutches, this is what they do. Okay, so that would affect my decision whether to get a male or a female baby Indian ring neck. The other thing that I would really want to know is with Indian ring necks, it is said, and I think this is fair to say, that you have to, if you socialize them, like I would really want to get uh, my baby Indian ring neck right when it gets weaned. Because that way, the minute, like I can spend as very much time with it as I can, we could start to bond. Sometimes, you know, some babies get weaned and they haven't been sold yet, and then they're a little older. Sorry about the birdie butt. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, an Indian ring neck, like we got Jules, their dad, when he was about six months. And he is somewhat friendly with us. He'll fly onto our shoulder and, and get a treat. He'll fly to our heads. I mean, he isn't as distant with us as like a wild bird by any means. He's far more tame than that. But like, we can't really, I mean, sometimes we can pick him up. We can't really do step up. He doesn't, you know, sometimes he'll do it, but not usually. So um, if you, if you wait, they sort of keep more of that independent mentality. So with that Indian ringneck species, you've got this independent mentality and to make them as friendly as possible, you really have to dedicate your time and energy and really uh, interact with them and bond with them. And if something happens, like sometimes I get really busy with work and I spend a little less time with my birds, you know, phases like that can actually affect the Indian ring neck. I've, I've been told by people, um, another person who had a female, that she can't really let time like that lapse or very little because then her Indian ring neck kind of loses her tameness. So that can happen. This does make Indian ring necks a little challenging. On the other hand, on my Indian ring necks, they're, they're both really great. I do have to be careful with my female. Like I said, because she's aggressive, so I have to just make sure she's not hurting anyone, make sure she's not doing anything naughty. Um, but Jules, he's kind of really fantastic. He's kind of a joker. He's kind of playful. Uh, he definitely feels comfortable coming in and asking for treats. He makes friends sometimes with some of the other birds. And so, you know, I could see how if we had gotten him as a baby and spent like that bonding time, I would have had a very different experience. So I don't want you to feel like I'm saying that Indian ring necks are not good pets. That's not what I'm saying. 
I'm saying that if I was looking at getting a baby parrot, I would really want to know these things so that I understand what it might be like getting an Indian ring neck versus what it might be like, for example, getting a blue bottom. He's just there. We're trying to introduce them. Um, Pretzel lost his mate. And so we're trying to introduce them, see if they want to be buddies. And so they're kind of on this, do I know you? Do I, do I like you? Uh, uh, uh. You can kind of see that dance going on. And so they're both kind of making noise and <laughs> being funny. So that's what you're happening to see today. All right, thank you for joining me in this blissful video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're thinking about getting a baby parrot, I hope that helped you a lot. Um, I will say that if you, if you are looking for a bird that is far more cuddly and you don't want a loud Quaker, because Quakers are kind of loud, um, one of the best birds, I think, is a green cheek conure. It is a little smaller than a Quaker or than an Indian ringneck, but green cheek conures, now Abby is sitting on my daughter's shoulder, they're amazing. They're friendly. They're sweet. They can learn to talk. Um, they're... They're affectionate, they wanna be with you. If you get a green cheek conure, get two, especially this year, the prices aren't too high. You should be able to get two for frankly, the price of one a couple of years ago. That way, when you're not with them, they keep each other company and they won't get into that needy place. Plus, I just had someone write to me and say that her crimson likes the husband, her husband, and so kind of attacks her. So if you have two green cheek conures, you're not gonna have that problem because they kind of like go Okay, we love each other, but with our human, you take that human, I'll take this human, so that they each get attention. So it's kind of nice that way and perfect. So get two. Even if you're single, get two. You'll be so much happier in the long run. Introducing them later is really challenging, whereas just getting two when you first bring them home or when they're young and you first bring them home, it's just totally different and a lot easier. All right, thanks for joining me. Stay tuned. If you enjoy my videos and you want to support my channel, one thing you could do is if you want an awesome coloring book, check out my books. I have coloring books and books on amazon.com under KB Raphael with some beautiful illustrations for coloring in. See, that's me. How cool. Check me out on Amazon.